Hello, 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 Facebook. I am Dr. Myla Bennett of Adarabella Plastic Surgery and Medical Spa in Johns Creek, Georgia. Hey, Imani, is that you? I just saw throw a heart up there. Um, and I'm coming on tonight to talk about scars. I've realized I've never talked about that before, and that's one of the most common things that people ask about. Um, and it's like the, one of the first things my patients will start to try to ask about as soon as surgery is over. That's the, that's like, like literally the day after surgery, they're like, what can I put on my scars? I, I don't know why I haven't thought to talk about this sooner, but I'm talking about it today. I know I'm on kind of late. Um, I had a long day. A lot of stuff happened today and my kids got back home kind of late. So Bradley's on his way down the stairs. Y'all haven't seen Bradley in a minute. I'm pretty sure that's Bradley. Is that you, Bradley? Now, these wintertime pajamas he have on, that has nothing to do with me. He dug these out, and he's been wanting to wear these. Yes, I'm doing Facebook, baby. So don't be laughing at the video talking about why she got those winter pajamas on him in uh, Georgia in the summer. She right there, baby. Say hi, Bradley Pops. Facebook ain't seen you in a long time. Hi. <laughs> he's supposed to be sleeping, but is Bennett sleep? Yeah. He kissing a girl with sleeping. What? <laughs> All right, good night. Good night, buddy. So, yeah, so anyway. Hi, everybody. Hi, Shamika. Hi, Victoria. Hi, Melody. Hi, Cynthia. Um, so, we're going to talk scars tonight. I know I'm late getting started, but like I said, my kids got home late, and so I just, they're not even, see, they're not even all, all asleep. Myla Rose is asleep, though, and Bennett is asleep. So, um, there's a few things that I wanted to cover talking about this topic because there's a misconception um, that plastic surgeons can make your scars go away. Um, when really what it is is that we know how to make them less less um, perceptible, perce perceivable. Which one is a word? Maybe both of them are. But makes them make we are able to make them more difficult to see. Make your eye. Um, not notices notice it as much we know how to hide scars oftentimes there's there's some things that we do that we can't hide the scars like a good example of that is brachioplasty that's the um the arm lift that operation we can't really hide the scar with that one um, but once the scar is there there are some treatments that we have that can minimize um, the appearance of it and make your eye kind of like um, make it so that your eye has a harder time focusing on it. Um, but once the scar is there, um, we have a few different things that we can do to help make it better. There's a few variables though that kind of contribute to what the scar turns out like. One of them is your genetics. So if you are genetically predisposed to keloiding or um, hypertrophic scars, Hypertrophic scars are thickened scars. Keloids are scars that um, grow outside of the original boundaries of the incision that was made or the in injury that was made. So a lot of times people will say, I have keloids, and they really don't have keloids. What they have is hypertrophic scars. Keloids are the ones that look marshmallowy and bubbly and just look like they just took on a life of their own. That's a keloid. If your scar is just thickened, that's called a hypertrophic scar. Hypertrophic scars are much easier to manage than keloid scars. If you are a keloider, there's really nothing that we can do to stop you from doing that. So certain surgeries, if a person keloids, I'm like, eh, I don't know if it's worth you getting it. Like a breast breast surgery, if you're a key, if you really are prone to keloids, um, you don't want those types of thickened scars um, around on your breast, on the front of your breast, and stuff like that. Um, even tummy tucks. I had one person that I did a tummy tuck on and she didn't kilo she didn't have any keloids in the past, but then the center of her tummy tuck scar keloided. Um that that made me kind of sad. We didn't have any warning that that was gonna happen. She hadn't had surgery before. She didn't have like a keloid on her ears, she didn't have any cuts in the course of her life that created keloids, and so it was kind of a shock. The only way to kind of treat that, actually there's a few things. Once you realize that a keloid is developing um steroid injections as soon as possible uh, helps a lot and it can slow it down as soon as the problem is that when when most people show up after they already the the keloid is already like there um 
But the thing is, they grow really fast. So, like, literally a week or two can make a difference if you have an aggressive keloid. They come, they do develop quickly. But if you just had surgery and you're in communication with your physician, your surgeon, um, and you're and it's looking like your scar is doing that, you can let them know and and perhaps you can get injected sooner before it gets out of control. When a keloid, the other things that we can do for keloids, more aggressive things, um, well, the first line is usually the steroid injections and also silicone sheeting. Um, and then if that doesn't work, we can cut it out and try again. Um, but you run the risk of the same thing happening, and that happens a lot. But a lot of times when you cut it out and try again, then steroid injections can be um, started sooner. So that way, since now we know what you're going to do, we can pr kind of plan for it and try to calm it down. And for really, really bad keloids that are totally out of control, we um, will do radiation therapy on those. So those are kind of the options for keloids. Most people don't keloid. So oftentimes what we're dealing with in, a, in the pro radiation, you heard me right, radiation, the same kind of radiation they use for cancer, um, uh, we will use for keloids. Um, so, but usually in the case, in the setting of a surgery, um, for the average person, keloids are not the issue. You get either hypertrophic scars or just a scar that you just don't like how it looks. You'd rather it not be seen. And so the, it's similar, um, treatments for that as, as with keloids. No, I'm not going to inject I'm not gonna inject just a normal scar that we just don't like how it looks like it's too dark or maybe it's slightly too thick. I probably won't inject it with a steroid because um, injecting it with a steroid comes with its own risks. Um, so for those types of scars that I consider like scars that are within normal limits to make those better, I will do silicone sheeting. In fact, all the scar creams that I think are actually useful and most plastic surgeons will agree um, they actually have silicone in them. Even if it's not a silicone sheet, the cream should have silicone in it. So silicone is one of the only things that has been proven to, without a doubt, um, improve the appearance of scars. A lot of people are like, oh, I put vitamin E on it, I do this. Vitamin E is nowhere near as powerful as silicone for scars. Silicone is like one of the best things out there. So you want, if you're looking at a scar cream and that you're in the drugstore trying to find a cream, like, you know, everybody's like Mederma, Mederma. It's not, if it doesn't have silicone in it, then it's a waste of your money. And what's really making those creams work is not the stuff that's in it, is the fact that you're massaging it in. Massage, um, outside of silicone and stuff like that, massage is the most... Um, effective thing you can do to make your scars nice and thin to make them not get thickened like it will keep your scar flat massaging your scar is the is one of the best things you can do in fact that's what i've been doing to my c-section scar because i have a hypertrophic um c-section scar which totally sucks like it's so ironic i'm a plastic surgeon you would think i would have gotten like been able to have a better scar but no i got the worst scar probably because I am a plastic surgeon. So I, I massage that thing like every day, a couple times a day. Um, and that helps keep it from getting any thicker and it helps flatten it. So you want to put enough pressure on there where it might feel a little sore when you're massaging it. If you're, if the, if the incision is fresh, like you don't want to be massaging it when you're like a week out, wait until before you start doing stuff like that, talk to your surgeon and let and they'll let you know if your scar is ready to do that because you can do damage doing that too soon. So, um, but once your once your incision is um, strong enough to withstand massaging, that is um, what you can do to make your scars nice and soft and um, so that they are not thick and raised. It helps flatten them out. Massage massaging, and then after massaging, their silicone creams or silicone sheeting but something with silicone in it will help with the color and with the th um thickness of it um then that's like the that's like the normal stuff that everybody can do whether you have a good scar or a bad scar um you if your scar is a little more 
in a place that's more visible and you're really trying to get the most bang for your buck as far as perception of the scar by other people, um, the next step up is microneedling. So, and microneedling also works for stretch marks, which are a type of scar. So, you can get your, you can microneedle, microneedle your scar um, every um, four to six weeks and get like a series of like three or four um, microneedling sessions. And it will make it, it, it's almost like it smudges it so that it's harder to see where the scar starts and the regular skin starts. Like it blends, it makes it so that they kind of blend in. It's like, it's like smudging it so that it's harder for your eye to no, notice it. So your eye, the human eye notices really straight lines. Like, so if you have a super straight scar, that's more noticeable than one where it's kind of crooked. Um, and then if the scar is nice and like perfect, so it's like a clear uh, line of demarcation, that makes it more noticeable. So the microneedling makes it so that the scar blends into the surrounding tissue. So it doesn't take it away, it just blends it. Um, and so that's one, that's a really good treatment that will help with the thickness of the scar, it'll help with the color of the scar, all that. The other modality that we have in office that's really good um, is lasers. And there's different types of lasers um, that you can use to make your scar look better. It, and it kind of depends on what we're trying to treat. So if your scar, the issue with your scar is color, then um, we might, I might use a, my YAG laser to try to lift up, lift either if, if it's an African American person, lift the pigment out, or if it's um, someone with a more fair complexion where the issue is that the scar is really pink, help pull the redness out of it. And that makes it harder to see. Basically what you want, a good scar is a scar that is the same color as the surrounding tissue, that is flat and that um, is not too wide. Um, and so that's what we're aiming for when we do these different treatments. So then there's more aggressive lasers like CO2 lasers, the, the ablative lasers, those are really good at making the scar really hard to see. Um, but all skin type, people of all skin types can't get the CO2 laser. So it depends on, you, you have to get a laser that is appropriate for your skin type. One laser that I used, to, I, I don't have it now and I used, and I had it in my last practice and I loved it for scars. Was a, it was an erbium laser and I could use that on all skin types and it was amazing for scars. And I would use it on my brachioplasty patients the ones where they, the arm surgery, where the, the incision's running, um, where the incision is running all along here on the inside of their arm, I would treat that, treat it three or four times with that laser, space it out two to four weeks apart, and it would make the, um, hold on y'all. Sorry, Myla was doing some jerking around there. She st she's still sleeping. Um, that laser would make those scars really hard to see. Um, I loved it. So let's see. We talked about creams. We talked about strips, microneedling laser. That's the major stuff. So the big thing is you don't want to be trying to do anything, any of these things to your scar until your surgeon tells you you're in the clear to do that. Trying to put these different strips on or creams on before your incision has turned into a scar is a problem. When you first have surgery, the day after surgery, the week after surgery, you don't have a scar yet. You have an incision. So you don't want to be doing scar therapies until your incision has transformed over to the scar zone. You don't have a scar the day after surgery. So trying to put these things on there before there's actually a scar is a problem. And depending on what you're doing, some of these things can make it, um, like the massaging, if you're trying to massage it, when it went before it has actually turned into a scar, you can rip the incision open. So you don't want to be trying to do any of this stuff on your own before you have the okay from your doctor. Yes, Ebony Best, that I talked about that at the beginning of the video. Um, it's Kenalog injections, which Kenalog is a steroid, is is used for um, keloids. Um, silicone will work for any scar. It just it depends on what your old scar looks like though. Like, is it thick? Is it dark? Is it like, what is it? If it's a darkened scar, oh, the other thing, if you're, if the scar is dark, as far as creams go, outside of silicone, you can also have creams that have skin um, bleacher, bleaching agents in it to help pull the pigment up out of the um, scar. And that would be something that's more 
uh, relevant for darker skinned people. Um, I'm not into Manuka honey. I can't speak on that. I'm, I've never used it. I'm not, I don't know about Manuka honey. I've heard about it. And I know in those groups, everybody always tells you to put, tells people to put Manuka honey on there, but I don't know about Manuka honey. And I tell my patients not to do that because I don't know about it. A Fraxel is a laser to consider. Um, that's, that's, Fraxel is a CO2 laser usually. Um, and that's good. Um, or I think some Fraxel lasers are erbium also. Those are, those are ablative lasers, and those are good for scars. Um, there's silicone. There's sil silicone formulations everywhere and over the counter. Um, you can buy it from your plastic surgeon. You can buy it over the counter. You can buy it on Amazon. You can get silicone sheeting almost anywhere nowadays. You can get silicone cream, like they have, I think it's called um, Scar Away. I think it's called Scar Away that you can buy in the, um, like at the drugstore, the pharmacy that has silicone in it. Um, I use, I like Silogen strips. I sell those in my office. Um, I like Biocornium and, um, oh, I can't believe I forgot the name of that other scar cream because I like that one too. It's made by um, Skin Medica. I, I can't believe I forgot the name of the um, scar cream from Skin Medica. But those are the three. Skin Medica has a scar cream. You can look it up. Um, I forgot the name of it. I don't know. Why. I can't believe I forgot. But um, those are the three that I will sell my my clients. It's a little pricier than the ones in the um, drugstore, but they have other stuff in them. Like they have more than just the silicone in them. That's helpful. Um, yeah, I don't know of how cheap it is. I think even the Scarway in the grocery store is like 30. I mean, in the um, pharmacy is like $30, $30. Everybody keeps asking me about these fascia blasters. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know about fascia blasters. Like, I don't know if that works. I, I can't, like, I can't think in my head about how that would make bruising go away, though. That doesn't, I can't physiologically see how that would make a difference for bruising. It's $35, yeah. I'm having my, oh, okay. Will it work on burn marks? We use silicone on burns all the time. So, um, silicone, that's what I'm saying. Silicone is like the workhorse of scar treatments. Like when people are burn victims and stuff, like they'll have silicone sleeves on and everything. Like it really helps. Um, I don't, derma rollers, I don't endorse derma rollers. Derma rollers. Um, they can't be sterilized. Like they're, um, you can't control the depth. You can't control the, the wideness of the puncture holes you're making. Um, so I don't endorse derma rollers. I think you should get microneedling in the setting of a doctor's office so that it's a clean, sterile um, procedure to keep you from getting an infection. Is what the same, Jessica? Um, I don't use Experil. Um, I think when you literally take every ounce of pain away, people tend to overdo it and tear up your surgery. So I use pain medication on my patients. It's, I don't have anything against it. That's just my thing. Um, some people love it. It's not going to hurt. It, it won't hurt you to get it. And exactly what you just said, you need to get back to work as soon as you can for your desk job. That's exactly why I don't use it. So getting to work before it's time will end up making you have complications. If you're getting Expero so you can work when you're not supposed to be working, that's you're just going to hurt your surgery and yourself. So that's exactly why I don't use it. You literally just made my point. <laughs> be careful. Don't rush your recovery. Um, you spend a lot of money and time on, um, on getting your operation. And so you want to make sure that you're not trying to rush 
the process because you can do harm that way. Don't go back to work too soon and tear, and tear up your operation. <clears throat> yes, Jessica, you can put silicone on it. Yep. All right, I guess there's no more questions. Y'all kind of quiet tonight. <clears throat> I know I came on late. Um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything before I sign off. Thank you, Joseph. Oh, thank you, Toya Saints. You said I'm your favorite girl. <laughs> thank you. I'm located in Johns Creek, Georgia, which is um, a suburb outside of Atlanta. Yes, it's true. You should not take ibuprofen before surgery. So ibuprofen, so that would be Motrin, Advil, um, ibuprofen. They're all the same. Um, you don't leave. That's not ibuprofen. That's naproxen, but you don't want to take that. Aspirin. Those are all things that um, affect your platelets and your platelets is what allows you to to clot and so it makes it you'll bleed too much if you use those if you use ibuprofen before surgery so your doctor needs to your doctor um should let you know when that stuff should end um dana i like biocornium i sell it it's a good it's good it's a good scar treatment Thank you, Delisha. Even fillers, Deborah. What was your question? What do you What do you mean, even fillers? Oh, yeah. Even before, if you take it before fillers, you'll just have more bruising. Like it will make you bruise more because you can't clot. So it's like a fine line. So like you don't want to clot too much because then you can get blood clots in your like DVTs, deep vein thrombosis in your legs, or pulmonary emboli. But um, you don't want, you need to be able to clot because we're cutting through vessels and stuff like that. And so your blood vessels need to be able to seal off so that you don't just keep bleeding. And so even when you get, when you're getting filler, if you've been taking, um, aspirin or ibuprofen beforehand, it will make you bruise like crazy on your face. Um, recovery after paniculectomy about two weeks. Sandra, if you think you have a blood clot, you need to talk to your doctor and they'll tell you what tests. So, so ladies, you know, I don't like it when people try to make me use this video as their doctor's appointment. So that sounds, that's a serious question and you need to talk to your doctor about that. They need to know that before surgery. That's not for you to decide what test. Your doctor will figure that out. Thank you, Dana. Um... All right, looks like I caught up. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to sign off. Do you guys want to see Myla Rose before I sign off? Because she's laying right here next to me. Hold on. I'm going to give you a little glimpse of my baby girl. She's sleeping so peacefully. All right. Um, when's a good time to start biocornium? I don't have you. Talk to your doctor. Um, talk to your doctor because, um, it's a, in ge generally I'll let people start at three weeks, but if your incision has anything going on that's not normal or you're healing slow, it, it could be too soon. So don't, that's not, you shouldn't be making that decision. Your surgeon should let you know when you have the green light to do that kind of stuff. My twin, I wish that girl looks exactly like her father. None of my kids look like me. I just birthed them and almost... Look, with Myla Rose and Bradley, I almost died having them. <laughs> and they look nothing like me. Sometimes Bennett looks like me a little bit, but she looks exactly like her dad, Myla Rose, does. Like, exactly like him. She looks nothing like me. She's gorgeous, though. Thank you, all Thank you, thank you. Um... Ibuprofen after surgery um, is not good either, not right after surgery, because you can't clot. So you are in, um, 
you're at risk of having a bleeding complication after surgery, literally all the way up until about three weeks after surgery, which is why we have certain restrictions on you like sex and stuff like that um, and exercise. So if you're taking something that is affects your platelet function, even after surgery, you are at risk of still developing a bleed. Like you're not out of the woods for a hematoma, which is bleeding after surgery. You're not out of the woods for that for a few weeks. Oh, Melody, you had a seroma. That's what that sounds like. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. I think I'm going to start Myla Rose her own Instagram page because she makes me feel some type of way every time I post pictures of her and she gets more likes than I get on my own dang own page. So I'm like, maybe I'll just give her her own page so I don't have to feel bad. <laughs> right. Bennett looks like me a little bit sometimes. Until you see a picture, until you see, I put a picture of Bennett up, like, right next, like, up, no, actually, did I post that? I might have posted it. It was a long time ago, this picture of Bennett when he was, um, well, it was Bennett last year and a picture of my husband when he was Bennett's age. And Lord have mercy, they look exactly alike. Like, Bennett sort of looks like me sometimes, but. All right, everybody, I'm going to go ahead on and sign off. So. I am Dr. Myla Bennett of Adarabella Plastic Surgery and Medical Spa in Johns Creek, Georgia. And you can reach me via my website at www.adarabella.com. -E Let me type that in. Or you can call my office. Hold on. B-E-L-L-A.com. Or you can call my office at 678 Three two five zero 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 six. Corey, call my office. Call my office. We can talk about it. Or at your, you know, yeah, call my office. <laughs> All right. Okay, everybody. I will see you guys later. Bye.